It is 4.45 in the morning. We've got a flight to catch. You're good, you're good. Run, George. Run. There you go. reached out to me, which was a big surprise. I want to say it was in the fall of 2019, but it wasn't long after that when you reached out to me again, because we had already established this connection. I was talking about your fragrance a bit, and you asked me, um, are you going to Scent Explore? Yeah, Scent Explore 2019. That's right, which it was in November that year. So we met at Scent Explore finally in person. Right. That was the first time we met in person, and we just had a great time there. We had a great connection, and. You know, Ross was there as well, and that's where I first met Ross in person as well. That's where I first met Andrea in person right. as well. And the and three Ma, of us, And Mon yeah. was there. Mon, Mon was at was my, in my, right. and, I, and I went to Mon and I go, this is who I'd like to have. So we meet. Mm -hmm. And so from November, I talked to Mon, Mon met everybody. What was going through your mind when I said, you guys were gonna be meeting with Mon, you're gonna conference you in. What's going through your head as this is all happening? I was really nervous because at that time in particular, I didn't feel like I had a super clear vision of what I would do with this opportunity. I was afraid, honestly, to kind of like put myself out there. And that's what the whole point of this opportunity was. It's like put yourself into a fragrance and here's the platform to do it. So I was really nervous going into that call. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to ask. I just wanted to kind of be a fly on the wall and see what other people ask and see what Mon has to say and just kind of get a little bit more insight into what this will look like. And that's part of also putting your artistry out there. And that's also part of the experience of coming out with a fragrance. A lot of this is putting your out, just like you do with your music and not knowing whether or not how it's going to be received or this, what if that. So you hang up the phone, we hang up, we're done. What did you initially want? Because this isn't the fragrance that you, this is not what you had initially. No. And so what was the initial, when it came time to you create? You know, at, at the time I didn't realize it, but I was starting to create my fragrance from the outside in, as if what I think people would want to see of me, instead of what I actually want to say and how I want to represent myself. So I came up with an idea that was sincere, but it wasn't me. Right. Um, I wanted to, it was very, it was very broad. I wasn't pinpointing anything in particular. And I won't even go into it, but it just, it just wasn't me. Right. I came to realize what I was actually doing. I was like, wait, this isn't actually me. Right. I need to put myself out there. That's the whole point of this. So once I realized that it was seamless, I literally, this is weird. I laid down on my floor in my living room with my phone and just opened up a blank note. I'm gonna like sit here for a while, close my eyes, and I'm gonna just write what, what feels right. And the vision came to me immediately, and that was, okay, music. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> it's such a big part of my life. I need to connect these worlds. So I said, okay, there's the world I'm gonna look at. I need to go deeper, what's next? Okay, well, how about playing music? Okay, that's more specific, great. 
but more specific, what's me? Well, how about me playing music? What is my experience like? How would I describe a moment to someone who doesn't know anything about what I do, or maybe has never seen you know, live music in this way? How would I describe my experience? So that's what I set out to do. I tried to paint a picture and said, this is my experience playing in a performance from start to finish. This is what's in the room. This is the ambience. This is the atmosphere. This is what I see, what I hear, what I smell. What's up, Fragrant World? Welcome back to a very special Stay Fresh production. This is not just another Stay Fresh production, I have to say. As you can see, in front of us is the thing. <laughs> We've been teasing about this for a while now. This has been in the works for about a year and a half at this point. We finally have the finished product to present to you. And I'm gonna give you a little bit, well, not just me, Grace and I are gonna give you a little bit of information about it. I can't even contain my excitement. It's, again, it's been so much anticipation. I just wanna tell you the story of the fragrance itself in terms of its inspiration, give you a little bit of an idea of what it smells like. And Grace definitely has a lot of experience wearing it, so she'll give her take on it. Let's talk a little bit about this fragrance here. So imagine you're in a, a club, a lounge, a jazz club, whatever it may be, it's dimly lit. The band takes the stage, and I'm telling you the story from my point of view. So I get on stage, when I start the show, when I start the performance, my trumpet is actually cold to the touch because it's been sitting on the ground for, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. So it's actually cold. So when we start the performance, it starts with a bang. The band hits its first downbeat, and that kind of represents what you get when you first spray this fragrance on. Just so you know, and you can probably see it here, the fragrance is called Brass and Soul. And the brass part is what we're focusing on here. I play my first note on the instrument, the band behind me, they accompany me, and it hits you. It's electric. This fragrance opens up very, very aromatic, very fresh. It has an aquatic vibe, a little bit watery. It's very spicy. And again, it is unapologetic. It is going to smack you. It is potent. I'm just, I'm telling you. <laughs> and you are gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is very diffusive. Lots of citrus is in here. Mandarin orange is probably the most prominent. You're gonna get lavender right off the bat as well. So again, all of this brightness is meant to depict the music starting. So it starts with a bang. The performance itself is gonna weave through differing moods and differing feelings of the songs and the, you know, the compositions themselves. But all the while I'm taking in the ambience of the room. Someone maybe in the front table just ordered a gin and tonic. So there's actually some gin in here in the heart. You do have gin, kind of gives it that kind of sharp, fresh, somewhat bitter feeling, but it is mostly balanced by a, quite a bit of sweetness, which we'll get to. The performance, as it moves towards the end, it reaches a head point, and then we hit our final note of the final song, and we just let that resonate, and the audience kind of goes wild, because I guess we did a great job, that's the goal. <laughs> and at that point in time, you know, the performance is over, I'm really taking in the feelings that the audience is giving to the band, you know, the rest of the room, now I'm, I'm feeling like, the, the wood of the walls of this old building, I can smell it. There's a nice kind of dry, woody, comforting quality to it in the base. Uh, someone in the back just ordered a dessert, a delicious vanilla dessert. There's definitely a nice dose of vanilla in here. There's a warm, sweet amber in here. It's very enveloping. Although it does kind of subdue in terms of the, uh, the hit factor, it still envelops, it fills the room. Again, it is potent. So just to kind of sum it up, very fresh, very aromatic, maybe a touch of soapiness in there, very spicy. You do have a nice little kind of gin quality in there, which is a little sharp, keeps it fresh. 
and the nice sweetness from that vanilla. This is a little smoky as well. And ultimately, I really do think this is an attention-getting scent. But Grace has actually spent a lot of time with this scent as well. I've been basically giving her little <laughs> decants and she'll go through them. I need another one. I'll give her another one. <laughs> and she's been plowing through these decants. What's your experience like with Brass and Soul? Oh man, this is, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's been me. a long time <laughs> in the making, a long time coming. I'm, I just can't even wait for you guys to get your hands on mm -hmm. it and try it. Um, but exactly like Justin was saying, and even I get chills when I hear this story, because it's such a combining of your worlds. Mm -hmm. Really cool at the opening, mm -hmm. very bright and fresh. Yeah. And it to me, it, it smells like confidence. Like Ooh, it's a yes, really... Yes. Um, strong, powerful scent, but it's also as it goes on and as you describe through the performance, and I think you mentioned this, the trumpet will warm. That's right, I did forget to mention that. Right? Yeah, yeah so that's the whole aspect. The fragrance goes from cool to warm as it dries on the skin. Again, it starts very fresh, very cooling, as you said, and we get into some warmer notes like the vanilla, like the amber, like the woods and it definitely warms up, which represents after blowing so much warm air through this instrument for like an hour, it's warm to the touch, basically as warm as my skin at that point. Yeah, so then as the fragrance lives, it just gets really spicy, yeah. enveloping, um, very comforting, I, it smells, you know, and really intoxicating. I think it's definitely something that people, honestly, you know, I've smelled a lot of your collection, mm -hmm. Um, I've never smelled anything like this. Mm. It's a really unique, very compelling scent. And that's honestly, whenever I've worn it, and I'm not just saying this for the video, <laughs> I <laughs> genuinely feel this way and people have said, I get, honestly, I get comments positively yeah. whenever I wear it. You know, yeah. people will say, what do you have on this? You smell amazing, like, what is this? What are you wearing? Yeah. Because I think it is unique, it's different, but it's also really, inviting yeah, it, it is you know people want to know what they're smelling yeah. and so and i think it is incredibly unisex as yes. you can see yes you you know, it's, it's definitely a stronger scent yes. which is why i feel like it gives you gives me that confidence yes. right yes. when i wear it, it feels kind of like a power scent you know like mm. i can i can do anything yeah <laughs> yeah and you know it's going to be with you all day yeah it honestly i'm not inflating this it will be with you until the next day. Yeah, because I've worn it, sprayed it in the morning, haven't even re-sprayed it, and the next morning, yeah. oh. you'll have been like, I can oh, smell Oh, I can still smell that. Yeah. yeah, it stays. It sticks around 22% oil concentration. Uh, just so you know, this was perfumed by a fantastic perfumer at Mon. His name is Vincent Kuczynski, and he did a phenomenal job interpreting the brief I was going for, the story I was trying to tell, he got it into this bottle. And then we talked on the phone a bit, we beefed it up a little bit, we enhanced some of the notes, tweaked some things, and that's what you see before you. And I really think he, he nailed it. And as Grace said, perfectly unisex. I've had people who don't give me compliments on my fragrance ever compliment me on this fragrance, which for me, just for me is telling something, but obviously you take that as you will. We're not trying to say, Get this and we'll get you compliments. But it might. But we are trying to say that it does have a commanding nature to it, but it's also very inviting. And it is appealing, but it's also quite unique. So. Yeah, so this box is really special. Uh, this was kind of the brainchild of George Zaharoff. So grateful to George, so grateful for the team that really helped bring all of this together. There's a lot of moving parts. And this box especially is incredible. George had this idea to represent a leather trumpet case. So that's what you see on the front. That leather plate represents like the outside of the trumpet case containing the brass and the soul, so to speak. My trumpet, and then I guess what I'm going to expel through it when I play. It's beautiful kind of copper-like colorway that goes with the cap of the uh, bottle. And you see the font here. This was actually inspired by a little bit of a Soul Train vibes, kind of like 1970s. This was another 
idea of George Zaharoff. And he has a wonderful in-house graphic designer. His name is David, and he did a phenomenal job with it. And as you can see, as we turn the box around, you'll see there's actually music on the box. And this is actually really special because this is an original melody of mine that George said, hey, we should put one of your songs on the box. So I gave him eight measures of one of my original songs. And this is it on the box. If you play music, you're welcome to just play it and see what it sounds like to you. We got the melody there, we got the, the chords there, so you can do all that and have fun with it. But it's just a little piece of me kind of stamped on the outside as well. So all in all, I mean, everything that this fragrance is representing, not only is in the fragrance itself when you smell it, but it's in the presentation, you can see it. The color of the juice, I wanted to go kind of with a, a maraschino kind of red or pink representing again something like a cocktail and I really do think the color does perfectly complement the scent that it smells the way that it looks yeah. so anyway we could go on and on but that is brass and soul and I'm so excited to finally present it yo I'm coming in with two pieces of very vital information number one this fragrance is only one batch so once it's gone, it is gone, while supplies last. Secondly, the price, $119 for 60 milliliters. We wanted to keep it under the threshold of 150. We know a lot of you were asking for that, and we are delivering. So before shipping, that is $119 for Brass and Soul. Back to the video. Also, I'm not the only one doing this. There's two other fantastic reviewers. We have Ross from TLTG Reviews. He has his wonderful fragrance and he's making a video on it which you'll be able to check out as well. I'm going to link him down below and as well as Andrea from Curly Scents. Her fragrance is out of this world as well and she's also making her own video so I'm going to link both of their channels down below. Make sure you check out their announcement videos. Get all the information about their fragrances. Hope you can check out Brass and Soul. I would love to hear your thoughts after the fact whenever you get a chance to get it and smell it please come back to this video or you can email me, which I always have my email readily available. I'd love to hear from you. Um, Grace and I would both love to hear from you. So thank you so much. We look forward to getting this into your hands and we'll see you in the next one.